Hey guys, Buffy Game back today, bringing you our video for our favorite weapon series for our tactical weapons. And today we're going to cover tactical weapons that can counter the current meta here in Call of Duty Warzone Season 2. And that's Season 2 of the Cold War integration. Uh, right now, the agency suppressors have been buffed to a point where they also have the same stats, really, or the pros as the monolithic suppressors, as well as the increase to recoil control. So take weapons from Cold War, which already are not balanced properly at all, and give them those additional stats with a recoil control, and they already don't have any recoil to begin with. So think weapons like the FFAR and the AUG are currently the meta if you're playing Warzone uh, at all lately, so you know that these weapons don't have any recoil. They're very, very fast TTK, very easy to use weapons, and with that agency suppressor buff now, with that recoil control, you don't need to really control any recoil on the weapons and just spray that thing as fast as possible. Same with the FFAR. It seems to be a 1,000 rounds per minute. You can get damage at range and kill people outside of probably 60, 60 to 80 meters comfortably without any recoil with the weapon, which is pretty insane. So how are we going to counter that? I'm going to go through some tactical weapons here today and things that are really viable. These are going to be all modern warfare weapons, so let's go ahead and get right into it. First off here, we're going to start with the Kilo 141 or the HK 433. So this was the, the previous meta at the end of Season 6 for Modern Warfare. And still pretty viable, even though it did get nerfed uh, a lot at range. So we'll strip this thing down. I'm going to leave the camo on here. I'm running, running just a digital camo that I'll show you. But for the suppressor, we're going to want the mono suppressor, obviously. It's going to give us the sound suppression damage at range. And you notice how there's no recoil control on this, unfortunately, like the agency suppressors. So um, your cons here are going to be the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. Barrel, we're going to want the same 19.8 inch prowler barrel. It's going to give us the damage at range increase, the bullet velocity, as well as the recoil control. Cons are going to be the ADS speed and the movement speed for this. Next up, we'll go with the optics. So this is really personal preference. If you want to go true old school metal, you'll go with the VLK. Otherwise, I really enjoy the integral hybrid sight the, or the Leopold hammer. Again, you get that 3.25 scout optic with the top mounted red dot or the delta point there on top. So you can switch to for anything at medium to CQC engagements. Next up, we'll go with the ammo. You're going to want that 60 round casket magazine of the 556 by 45 NATO. So you'll double your ammo from 30 to 60. Con or the cons are going to be the ADS speed and the movement speed. And then for the underbarrel attachment, Definitely you can go with the Commando Foregrip here. The recoil on this still isn't really that bad at all. However, the damage at range for the weapon overall is going to take much more bullets to kill than it used to, which is good. So this was a good nerf. However, still very viable. Uh, low recoil weapon, easy to get shots on target, and that Commando Foregrip there will help you out with that. So that's our HK 433 or our Kilo 141. Again, still a really, really good weapon. You're just not going to be able to beam people uh, at 300 meters with this thing, which is good. That's not how it should be. So I think this was a really good nerf that they did with this. Uh, however, it leaves <laughs> really uh, the weapons in a spot where only Cold War weapons are dominating the meta right now. So that's definitely one option. I think a lot of people sleep on this because it got nerfed so heavily, but it definitely still performs very, very well. A very reliable weapon. Next up, I call this one the Squad Killer. This is the PKP Petron Egg. So we'll go ahead and strip this down. I'm using the standard issue blueprint for this. So it has the Zeneco buttstock as well as the Zeneco hand card uh, guard on here. And they finally fixed it so it has that nice fat muzzle brick on the end there by default, which looks really nice. So we're going to want the monolithic suppressor or the PBS-4 on this. So that'll give us sound suppression damage at range as well as keep us off the minimap. The ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness are the only cons there. For the barrel option, instead of the 26.9 inch extended, which will be the longest barrel for this, I'm going to go with the 25.9. So this gives us the Petron Egg with that carrying handle there on the barrel. And this is actually, I think, performs very closely uh, stat-wise to the 26.9. However, the mobility you get with this is much, much greater than the 26.9. So I'm going to go with the 25.9 heavy. And again, damage range, damage at range, as well as bullet velocity. You're just not getting the recoil control. But with the stance grip on there, you're going to really be able to mitigate that. The recoil is not hard to control whatsoever, and you can move much, much faster with that barrel. Optic, since this is a Russian weapon, we'll go with the VLK optic. And again, the standard issue version here retains the camouflage, which is nice. Buttstock will leave blank because we have that nice Zeneco buttstock there. We'll go down to the ammunition. I'm going to run that 200 round box magazine here. That's going to give us a 762 by 54 millimeter R. So we're going to increase from 100 to 200. And that allows us to just destroy people with this thing. Countless ammo, just dump ammo at people. And the snatch grip here is going to help us with the recoil control and the ADS speed. The con is going to be the movement speed 
for this. But again, we get the ADS speed and the recoil control, which is huge for this. So this is the PKP Petronag 200 round. This thing will destroy squads easily. Uh, the mobility increase you get from that Petronag barrel there with a 25.9 inch is, is amazing compared to the longest barrel on this. So I highly recommend this build. Very, very good. Very, very accurate. Easy to control the recoil. Fast rate of fire. Definitely still in my mind the best machine gun in the game. And you can just destroy people with this. No matter if you're using AUGs or FAMASAs, this will tear through anybody very, very quick. TTK. So that's our Petronag. Next up, we'll go with the Val. This is still the fastest TTK weapon in the game. Uh, which is really nice, so you can beat anything with this if you're in those close quarter situations. So we'll throw the VLK 200mm OSA on there. We'll get that increased damage range and the bullet velocity. The cons are going to be the ADS speed. We'll make up for that, though. So we'll get that 200mm OSA. It's going to be that heavy integral monolithic suppressor type barrel here. The aftermarket, not really an, a, a real barrel for the ASVAL in real life. However, it'll work well in this game. So next up, the laser, we're going to want the tack laser for the ADS speed, aiming stability, and the aim walking steadiness. The cons are going to be the lasers be visible to enemies when you are ADSing. Next up, the optic. I'm going to go with a nice Russian optic, the PBX-5 holographic sight there. Precision sight picture, just a red dot. It's about a one and a half times increase in zoom magnification, and you'll lose about a frame for the ADS speed, but we have the tack laser on there, so it'll make up for it. Nice, clean, precision sight picture. We'll skip out on the stock for the ammo. I'm going to go with the 30 rounds, so we'll increase from 20 to 30 of the 9 by 19. Or, excuse me, the 9 by 39. <laughs> we are not running 9 by 19 with this. It's 9 by 39, so a much, much heavier round. This is basically, think of a 300 blackout for the 5.56. It's the equivalent except for the 7.62. So this is a big, heavy round, and it is a subsonic round. So it, very, very high damage with this thing, as it should be. High rate of fire here with 900 rounds per minute in-game. And then we're going to run the operator foregrip for this. Recoil control is the primary thing here. This is surprisingly, at least, unless they fixed it, still gives you the best recoil control for this weapon, hands down. So this is our AS Val build. Again, this is the fastest TTK in the game. The downside is you have 30 rounds of ammunition, but if you can control that uh, and, and really preserve your rounds on this, it's going to destroy people. So you can actually stretch this thing out to pretty decent range with this barrel on there, too. So that's our AS Val. Go ahead and back out, and we'll cover our Ash 12.7. Kind of a, a hybrid for the uh, the Ash as well as the VL, or excuse me, the uh, the sniper rifle that we covered. I forgot what it is called from Ghost at the top of my head. Forgive me, but the uh, I want to say it's the VLK, but that's that's not right. So we'll strip this thing down. Basically, an Ash 12 um, muzzle. We're gonna want the Colossal Suppressor. That'll give us the sound suppression, damage at range, and the recoil control. And the cons are going to be the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. And really quick, because it's bugging me, the VKS, that's the one. So it's a hybrid between the Astro and the VKS almost is basically what we're building here. So we'll put that Colossal Suppressor around there. We're going to put the 810 millimeter barrel on for the damage at range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control increase. We're going to run the TAC laser, again, for the same pros and cons we just discussed. It's a slow, heavy weapon, so you're going to want that ADS speed increase. Optic, because it is a Russian weapon, we'll run the VLK optic for that three times optic. And then we're going to want the Merc foregrip. So a lot of these heavy caliber weapons, they benefit more from a Merc uh, because anything really over 7.62 and this firing a 12.7 by 55 is definitely going to want a Merc foregrip to control that recoil if you're going to rip this thing full auto. And you get hip fire accuracy in case you get in bad situations up close. However, I typically run this with something uh, for close quarters. But this is our Ash 12.7 millimeter and this thing definitely will rip at long range these barrel combinations along with the suppressor give you bullet velocity that's i believe even greater than the hdr so this thing will destroy uh especially at medium range so very very viable weapon will crush any auger from us user right now very good and you can see there i usually pair that with a with an as valve so those two work really really well together and they complement each other well next up we'll cover the ace or the galil ace so I covered this weapon just the other day in our favorite weapon series for our Warzone weapons. So we're going to want the monolithic suppressor. Same pros and cons we discussed. We'll go with the longest barrel option on this for the S440. Damage at range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. And then we're going to go into the optic, the VLK3 times and then for the laser we're actually going to want a laser on this for the tack laser again same pros and cons we get that ads speed benefit this is a heavy caliber weapon so the movement speed is going to be a little bit slower and then for the under barrel we'll run the merc foregrip for the recoil control again I, I believe this gives it the best recoil control with the merc foregrip over the ranger or even the commando this thing does have pretty heavy recoil 
outside of uh, medium range. So this will really help you control that best you can in my mind. And, and again, if you're going to engage medium to long range, this is the one you want. So go ahead and select that. And that is our Galil our Ace or our IWI Galil Ace. Again, still a very, very, very powerful weapon right now. One of the sleepers. I don't really see many people running it right now, unfortunately. And last up but not least for, for this part of the series is going to be the MCX SIG Virtus Patrol. So we'll go ahead and strip this down. I'm just utilizing the tank blueprint, one of my favorite ones with this. However, you can make it look uh, pretty good with other blueprints as well. We'll run the Monolithic Suppressor. We're going to run the longest barrel here for the Tempest Marksman. Skip out in the laser for the optic. Is this a new one here? I'm going to run the Scout Combat or the Elcan here. It's going to give us that 3.25 magnification, but you'll see what I do with that. We're going to skip out on the stock, the perk, and the ammunition. We're going to go with that 60 round magazine. So we'll increase from 30 of 5x6x45 by to the 60 round. So we'll run that casket mag. And then the underbarrel, best recoil control you're going to get for the Virtus is going to be the Ranger Foregrip. And that'll help you keep this thing basically uh dead accurate very very little muzzle climb on this with with this combination as well as the scout combat i feel it gives it much more uh definitely benefits with the recoil control i believe uh we've we've seen those stats provided by true game data this definitely does assist with the recoil control uh this optic here so customization wise reticle we're gonna want the tipo so this will give us a very similar reticle to what we have with the blk nice clean cross there Allows us to see our target, see what we're shooting at. Nice, clean, precision sight picture. And again, this thing is deadly, deadly accurate with the high rate of fire of the M13 or the Sig Virtus here in game at around, I think it's 900 or a little bit over in game. And uh, this thing destroys very, very fun weapon. Very, very accurate as well. So just be careful of what you run with this because you're stuck with that 3.25. You may want to run an SMG with this as well. So very very good weapon again this thing rips at medium to even some longer ranges i would say as well I've, I've had a lot of success with this the past few days i'll be covering this weapon more in the future as well with this combination the alcan looks very nice on this and again just very very accurate so those are all the weapons let me know what you guys think we covered the mcx virtus patrol the galil ace the ash 12.7 millimeter the as val the pkp pechenegg and the H and K 433 or the key the one for one. So let me know what you guys think. What's your favorite combination here in game? Um, very, very good weapons here to count on the metal. This is part of our tactical weapons. I believe this is tactical weapon number 10. So let me know down below what you guys think of this, what recommendations you want to see for the next part of this series. And again, these weapons will really help you count on the current meta in season two of Warzone until they get around to finally patching and maybe making the Cold War weapons, uh, not overpowered as they have been since the integration launch. So we'll have to see what happens there. Till next time, I'll leave you guys with that. This is Buffner Gaming with the Technical Weapons series. Till next time, Buffner Gaming out.